Hello, Corey here. Uh, welcome to my music library. I'm going to uh, have a little video for you today. It is, um, it is uh, in early in the morning here, and I thought it would be nice to just take you through my music library, my current library here. It's not really very large, actually. Um, I've lived uh, in several houses since I've been on YouTube, and in the process of moving from one state to another state. Uh, we actually lost many books. Actually, the post office actually lost many of my former piano books. Uh, we also have several books in storage in another state right now. So this is by far not my total collection of books, but it is uh, mostly probably 80% of what I use and what I've used in the past. So I want to go over uh, my music library here and I thought this would be an interesting video because if you're a pianist, um, you throughout your life, throughout your musical life, hopefully you'll be uh, accumulating or building up a music library like this. Uh, many of these books actually have much sentimental value for me. Uh, many of these books I've had since I was a child or a teenager in my formative years learning piano. I started piano lessons right before my seventh birthday, so I was six years old going on seven. And uh, anyway, let's go through this. Uh, first of all, there are a couple different ways you can organize your music library. I happen to have always organized it in chronological order. So, uh, what I used to do actually is I, I had, uh, for, for example, over here on the left, starting at the top left, well actually th these are all sort of resource books like uh, encyclopedias and sort of resource books. But starting here, I had starting on the left, I used to have it in chronological order or in time period order. So over here on the left I would have maybe Baroque or anything before Baroque. Baroque like Bach, Handel, Scarlatti, that kind of thing. Then, you know, I would go through, you know, Mozart, Beethoven, and then, uh, you know, get through the Romantic composers here, and then the, you know, the 20th century composers down here. But actually, um, my, uh, my wife has been doing it another way. My wife always organized her library, which actually is in another room. It's in our living room area. She always organized her books um, alphabetically by composer. So the, you know, the A's, the B's, the C's, the D's, all the way up through here. So uh, actually she began, uh, she's more organized and more clean than I am, so she likes to clean up and she started to organize my books uh, alphabetically. I was, I was used to it chronologically and now it's alphabetical. So it, 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 it's sometimes a little confusing for me to find my books. But now I'm sort of used to it in, in the alphabetical order. So you remember there are two ways to do it. You can do it chronologically or you can do it alphabetically. So choose what you like best and try to stick to that and then you can have them organized and you can always find what you need to find. On the top here of my music library, currently I have some resource books. I have, for, for example, <clears throat> a book here, the four part chorales of J.S. Bach, which I use for my research. I have here Maurice Hinson, Guide to the Pianist Repertoire, third edition. Excellent book, by the way. If you're a pianist, you need this book. I have, let me see, I have uh, Johann Sebastian Bach, The Learned Musician by Christoph Wolff. This is the leading biography right now of Bach. I have the new Harvard Dictionary of Music. I've had this since college, actually, so it's not really new anymore, but it is an excellent dictionary of terminology and stuff. It's about this thick. Uh, New Harvard Dictionary of Music. I have a really interesting uh, historic book here, Johann Sebastian Bach, The Boy from Turingia. With a, it's a children's book with 
lots of nice illustrations and even musical examples in here. My father uh, used to collect antiques, antique books, and he and my stepmother found that for me in an antique bookstore. I have Bach's B minor mass. This is actually from, this is a piano a choral score, Bach's B minor mass from, actually it's a Schirmer edition from the year, it's about 1900, 1899 actually, so this is over 100 years old here. And I got this in an antique bookstore. Excellent, excellent uh, book here. And I have some, let me see, Handel's Messiah. Here, a piano, choir uh, arrangement of that, or an edition of that. I have some Bach Chorale books here for uh, keyboard and uh, voice. I have several hymnals. I'm actually a collector of uh, church hymnals. I have a United, United Methodist hymnal here, where I was organist for several years. I have a New Century hymnal here. I have a theological book here, The Purpose of Man by A.W. Tozer. I have a, a very old hymnal here. I think it's a Presbyterian one. I have another old hymnal here. I like hymnals. Whenever I go to uh, antique stores or book sales, I like to find old hymnals. Another old hymnal here, old hymnal here, a couple other ones here, an old book of the Gospel of Luke here, which I picked up in an uh, uh, antique bookstore. And then, uh, so these are mostly just sort of reference books. I have other, other reference books in, the, in another room. And starting here is alphabetical. So the A's are here. I have a book of uh, Bach Chorales. Uh, Bach Chorales Analyzed here by uh, Christopher Charnecki. And goes through here. I have various Bach editions here. I have Bach's Clavier Ubon, second part. I have his French Suites. I like, I happen to like Peter's editions a lot. So I, I have a lot of Bach Peter's editions. I have, but I have several other kinds of Bach editions here. Just various Bach books here. I have complete keyboard transcriptions by Bach here. I have various things in here. I have the Well-Tempered Clavier. I have Bach's organ music here published by Dover. I have his partitas here. I have some more Bach chorales here. The Riemann Schneider Bach chorales. Um, more Bach here. I have this book here. You know, this, I have this book and <laughs> this has sentimental value. I had this, I think when I was a piano student, when I was about eight years old. It's an old uh, Schirmer edition of Bach, a uh, master series for the young. And uh, I've had this, this book here is about 50 years old. <laughs> So I've had this since I was young. Really nice, nice pieces in here. Nice Bach pieces for beginning pianists. And I have his Italian concerto here. This is in the Henley edition. <clears throat> and we go through bees, bees. I have some Bartok here. Bartok's Microcosmos. I don't have all his volumes, but I have volume 5 here and volume 6 here. A little ripped up here on the side. I think my wife has the other volumes of that. I have B. Balkum, William Balkum, Complete Rags for Piano here. I have more Bartok. A whole bunch of Bartok. Actually, in college, I played... I have Allegro Barbaro. These are all Boozy and Hawks editions. Romanian folk dances, Bartok's Sonata. I played all of these in college when I was a music major. Uh, Suite Opus 14, Improvisations. I remember I played these in uh, the comp uh, competition that I played in in college. 
I have the Out of Doors Suite, which I played in one of my uh, recitals. Actually, in my junior recital, I played uh, Bartok's Out of Doors Suite. I have some Brahms here, Brahms Paganini variations. In the Bellwin Mills edition, I have more Brahms here. More bees, Brahms, Bergmuller. Bergmuller, a bunch of uh, the famous 100... There are 25 studies here, Opus 100. I have Opus 105, brilliant studies here. Some more Bergmuller. Chopin. Let me go through my Chopin here. I have mostly, I have a mostly Shermer edition of Chopin, which I've had these for forever. I've had these probably since high school. Here's the Polonaises here. Chopin Etudes. I've had these forever. These are really worn out, but it's st they still work and they're still good editions. I really do like very much the Schirmer Chopin editions and the reason for that is that they were usually edited by students of Chopin, by uh, Josephi or Mikuli, who, who both were premier students of Chopin and they knew his style very well and so I do really like Shermer for Chopin. Shermer is not good for everything. I'll be discussing this in another video on editions. But um, not all editions are good for every composer or every style. So Shermer is excellent for Chopin. I've always loved Shermer Chopin. Here's a very popular edition. Here's a, a reprint of the Panarevsky edition of Ballades, Impromptus, and Sonatas of Chopin. This is Dover. Dover always publishes copies, republishing of older editions. So that's there. I have some. I have the Henley edition of the Chopin Nocturnes, which is nice. I have the Henley edition of the Chopin Scherzi, which is also nice. Not, you know, but I'm not crazy about Henley editions of Chopin. I don't know, for some reason, I, I prefer Shermer. I, I just, I don't know why. I've always preferred Shermer editions. Now, Henley editions, Henley editions, you know, the big blue book here, they're excellent editions for, I think, for anything before around 1800. So Bach, Beethoven, um, uh, anything of Mozart, anything of that nature, Henley is excellent. But I think I'm not a fan of Henley for later music, romantic composers necessarily. I don't know why. I've just never have been a fan of, of Henley for later music. I think they're better for classical music. I have a bunch of uh, Cimarosa, <laughs> which I haven't really played much of, but I have a bunch of Cimarosa books here. He was a composer around the time of Mozart. I actually got these books from somebody who gave them to me. So I haven't really played a whole bunch of Cimarosa. I looked at his music. It's nice. I have some Confrey in C's. We're in C's. Zez Confrey. I have a lot of this. these recordings on, on YouTube. The cover is off, but I've had this book since I was a kid, since I was like 12 years old. This really has sentimental value to me. So I love this book here. And then we have, let me see, more Cimarosa, Aaron Copeland, we're in the seas. I got four piano blues and some other compositions of Aaron Copeland, the uh, 20th century American composer. I have Cherney, Carl Cherney, a bunch of his collections. I have here the Peter's edition of uh, Cherney's uh, Finest Etudes here, The Art of Finger Dexterity, Opus 740. That is in the Peter's edition. Then you have, I have uh, some more Cherney here in a shocked edition. I have these, or in the D's here, I have Debussy Preludes here. This is in the Durand, the French edition. Thank God this is only volume two. I lost volume one, I don't know where it is anymore. That's the more Debussy here in 
Uh, the Shermer edition here, David's favorite piano works in Shermer. <clears throat> I have, let me see, a bunch of other stuff here. Gershwin, uh, G's, we're in G's. I have Gershwin, I have Gottschalk. This, is a, this book has sentimental value. I had a teacher, a piano teacher I had when I was about probably 13, 14 years old. And... A uh, really nice lady, and she 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 knew I loved ragtime and that kind of music at that time. So she introduced me to Gottschalk, uh, the uh, the great American composer Gottschalk, who used a lot of uh, Afro-Cuban rhythms in his music, and it's a roughly similar, a little bit some to ragtime, sort of jazzy kind of rhythms. And uh, she introduced me to his music. I loved that when I was around 13 or 14. So this book I've had for a very long time, compiled and edited by Eugene List, The Gottschalk, A Compendium of Piano Music. I've always loved that book. Had it for a very long time. Grieg, Complete Lyric Pieces for Piano. I have the Shermer edition of that. So we're in the G's now here. And it's hard to get these books back in. Gurlitt, Gurlitt, a composer of lots of a beginning, more beginning type music here. I have some Handel, we're in the H's. I have George Frederick Handel, some sweets here. Hindemith, Paul Hindemith. I haven't really played a whole bunch of his music, but I, I do have his Ludus Tonalis, which is sort of like the in the Myths edition of the Well-Tempered Clavier, I have his third sonata here, I have his first sonata. I haven't really played these much, but maybe someday I will, or I'll get to them sometime. So I've got Hindemith, I've got uh, Hummel, Johann Nepomuk Hummel, great composer about the time of Beethoven. I've got, let me see here. Jensen, don't really know him very much. I don't know where that came from. I have the Fitzwilliam Virginal book. Excellent, uh, nice collection, uh, very large collection of English virginal music from around the late 1500s, early 1600s in England. Uh, these are excellent for actually for a lot of pieces here work on the organ as well. And sometimes I play them on the organ. I have two volumes of the Fitzwilliam Virginal book. I have more Bach chorales. This is actually the main Bach chorale book that I use for my editions of Bach chorales and my research. This, in my opinion, is the finest one. It's out of print. This is uh, collected and arranged in melodic order by H. Elliot Button. Chorales harmonized by J.S. Bach with a new preface by Peter Williams. This is actually what, this is what I use all the time. I base my editions of Bach's Chorales on these. And my sight reading in harmony, my best selling sight reading in harmony actually was, uh, everything was taken from this book. So I rely on this a lot. This is sort of my, my uh, Bible, so to speak, of Bach Chorales. I love this book. Unfortunately, it's out of print. They don't have it in print anymore. Going down here, so we're in the, around the K's, around the K's here. I got Kulau, complete sonatinas for piano, Shermer edition. I have Ernesto Lecuona, the great Cuban composer, Lecuona. He wrote the, uh, uh, Malaguena, dum bum 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 bum. He's famous for that. I haven't really played much of his music, but I'd like to look at it someday. I've got Liszt. We're in the L's now. Franz Liszt. I have uh, I have uh, several of these or a few of these uh, editions here. Dover editions of piano transcriptions from operas which I've uh, looked at. They're very difficult. Actually, this, this spiral binding I've had added because it was hard to keep open. So you might want to do that. If you ever get a book and it's hard to keep open, 
simply go down to the printers and get a spiral binding. I think it just cost just a few dollars to get that put in there. So I have several, several um, editions of books, bigger ones that I have the spiral binding put in. And I have more lists. I have a lot of lists here. List etudes, list transcendental etudes. Uh, I have uh, etudes here in Peter's edition. Peter's is excellent, by the way. It's one of my favorite editions, as I said before. Some more lists. Franz Liszt. Franz Liszt. I have all of the... I have all of the 19 Hungarian Rhapsodies here. In an excellent edition here. This is the Bright Kopf and Hertel edition. They're, they're actually almost in brand new condition. So those are Bright Kopf and Hertel, Franz, Franz Liszt, the, all of the Hungarian Rhapsodies, which are very fun to play and not easy. They're difficult, of course. And I have Mendelssohn, a bunch of Mendelssohn here. I have Rondo Capriccioso in the Henley edition here. I have Mozart. This, this book here, it has sentimental value as well. This is my Mozart Sonatas. Uh, the front cover is ripped off, but it is, it is the one with a picture of Mozart here. And he, um, uh, when he was young, this is Theodore Presser Company, Mozart's Sonatas and Fantasies for the Piano. It's about this thick. And it's an excellent edition. I, I like it because it's an urtext, meaning that there's no editorial markings from, from editors, and there are no fingerings, which actually I like. I prefer no fingerings in edition. So it's, it's excellent in, the, in that way, and that you can really, you know that Mozart wrote what's in here. Now, if you get a Schirmer edition of Mozart sonatas, then that's a different story. They're not very good, so... But I'll go over that in another video on, on e editions. Uh, we're in M's. I have Luzorzi pictures at an exhibition, which I played a little bit of. I have Moskowski etudes. Moskowski, a, a couple books of his etudes here in the Schirmer edition. I have... Let me see. I have the Ernesto Nazareth, the great... Um, uh, the great uh, Latin American composer here from, I wanted to say Argentina, is from uh, Brazil, I'm sorry, Brazilian composer. Another uh, book of Ernesto Nazareth, Tangos, I like Nazareth's music, Poulenc, Francis Poulenc, we're in the P's now. I have some of his music. Prokofiev. I have all of Prokofiev's piano sonatas here in the edition edited by Georgi Sondor. I have Prokofiev, some more Prokofiev here. I have his Visions Fugitive, Music for Children. I have his Toccata here. I have Purcell, Henry Purcell, the great uh, English composer. These are excellent Baroque pieces here. Henry Purcell. And we're in Rachmaninoff now. Ours. It's a whole bunch of Rachmaninoff. I have I have his Etude Tableaus here. I have uh, his uh, Preludes, Complete Preludes for Piano here. I have Piano Works of Rachmaninoff, Transcriptions. I have Sati, Eric Sati here. Some more Rachmaninoff here, and then I have some Sati, three Genophides, and some other Sati in here. I have Erwin Schulhoff. Erwin Schulhoff, great, uh, great composer of uh, the early 20th century era. He actually died in the Holocaust. He was killed by the Nazis, actually, in a, in a concentration camp. Just fantastic composer. He was sort of like Gershwin in that he he uh, uh, fused classical with jazz together. Really interesting and exciting music. Erwin Schulhoff. You know, and if I had, uh, if there were more than 24 hours in a day, 
and I had a lot of time, I would get to all of this music, but it's difficult with all the teaching I'm doing. Uh, Schubert and Promptus, this is in the Henley edition, excellent edition of Schubert and Promptus. I have more Schubert here. Schubert dances in an old edition. This is a very old edition here, Schubert dances. <clears throat> if you ever get around to going to antique bookstores that have music books, then do, do so. This is a Schumann, the Schumann Fantasy, a very, very old Peter's edition here that I acquired in some sale somewhere. So that's uh, Schumann. I have a bunch more Schumann here. I have Schumann books published by Dover. A whole bunch of volumes. I have one, two, three, four. Uh, four big books of Schumann here. I have Scriabin, we're in the S's. I have Scriabin's Complete Preludes and Etudes for Piano. I have Tchaikovsky. I have Album for the Young. Album for the Young here, 24 easy piano pieces, excellent pieces. I have The Seasons by Tchaikovsky here, both in Shermer editions, which are excellent, by the way. So Shermer is very good for Tchaikovsky. I would highly recommend that. I have Turina, never really played much of him. I have a Russian edition of Tchaikovsky. This is the Pletnev transcription of the Sleeping Beauty and the Nutcracker Suites here, which I haven't really looked at much. So more Tchaikovsky. I have Fats Waller. We're in the W's now. The great uh, uh, American uh, stride composer Fats Waller. Excellent book there of his. Some transcriptions. And I have some various books here. 59 piano solos you like to play. Nice uh, collection here of uh, pieces. 59 piano solos, solos you like to play, sort of the same thing, but maybe I think a different edition of them. Uh, music, classics to moderns here. <clears throat> Some various things in here. Piano, oh, this, this one has sentimental value here. Piano pieces for adult students. This, this, this is a nice collection of... I've had this ever since I was a kid. It's ever since I was probably eight years old, I had this book, and I still have it. So I love that book. I will always love that book and since I was a kid. And let's see here. Oh, this one. Um, Sabbath Day Music for the Piano. This is actually edit. This comes from 1934. It's out of print. It's from the Oliver Ditson Company. These are actually, this has some of the best arrangements I've ever seen. And uh, a couple of the things I play on YouTube, my popular videos of uh, the Ave Maria, for, for example, the Ave Maria, uh, the Gounod, the Bach Gounod, Ave Maria, that's a very popular YouTube video on my channel, comes directly from this book, which is out of print. So this is excellent actually great book you know if you can go to antique bookstores and find good music I think oftentimes they had better music a hundred years ago than today and uh, my own editions here and you know I'm gonna have another video dedicated just to the box scholar editions but I have a uh, now, as I speak, I have 12 titles now in the Box Scholar series. Holy Trinity of Piano Technique, My Four Medieval Portraits, Box Toccata and Fugue in D Minor, Another Holy Trinity of Piano Technique, Jingle Bells Through the Grades, um, My Own Ten Chorale Preludes based on uh, uh, Corrals of Bach, W.C. Handy's St. Louis Blues, one of my best sellers, um, and some other. These are the first printings of those books when I had, when they had spiral bindings. I have a new printer now, so, so they're, uh, the new printer doesn't use the spiral bindings, which I actually prefer. And then, oh yeah, up here, I didn't show you up here. I have the 
uh, Box Scholar editions of Bach chorales, 24 easy four-part chorales, 36 four-part chorales for Lent, Passion, and Easter, 24 four-part chorales for Advent and Christmas, and some more extra books here of the chorales. So I have those. Those are Box Scholar editions edited by me. <coughs> Excuse me. Then you go down here, and I have just uh, mostly teaching books here, but then also I have books that I can't fit up here. I have my highly prized Scott Joplin Collected Piano Works, which I've had forever since I was a kid. You know, if I've talked about this in other videos, it's pretty much torn apart right now. This is the one with the maple leaf on it. This is still, still I use this for all, pretty much all my Joplin, Scott Joplin playing and recording. This is Beethoven Sonatas, uh, Volume 1 from the Henley edition. That this would never stay open, so I had uh, I went to the printers and had this spiral bound here, which actually is falling apart. I think the cover is falling off, but I've had this forever. I've had this probably since high school here, and then I have the uh, volume 2, for, for some reason I never got around to getting the Henley edition of volume 2 of the Beethoven Sonatas, but I have the Calmus edition for that. It isn't Rutex, not the greatest edition, but I do use that for Beethoven. Then down here I have pretty much, pretty much all teaching stuff. I have John Thompson's piano course here, Music for Children. A Dozen a Day, that's a great uh, series here, A Dozen a Day for Kids. More John Thompson, more John Thompson, a lot of John Thompson. Michael Aaron, Michael Aaron piano course here. More Michael Aaron, I do like the Michael Aaron piano course. I like John Thompson for kids. I like A Dozen a Day. I have Alfred's basic piano course here. I have some Faber books here, of course, the best-selling Faber books. I have more Alfred, Alfred for adults here. Alfred uh, adults, and I have, I think, I have all three of their books here, all three volumes of those. <coughs> What's this? I don't even know what that is. And then I have some more books here, some more teaching books. These are, well, let's see, more Piano Discoveries. Excellent series here, Piano Discoveries for kids. That's a really nice, fine book I use. I have some ABRSM books here. This is a volume grade four of ABRSM. I use those for some students. I have... RCM, that's the Canadian system here. I have some RCM books here I've used for some students. I have the very excellent um, Martha Muir books here, Jazz, Rags, and Blues. I have, think I have pretty much all of those, Jazz, Rags, and Blues. Excellent for students who want to learn that style. So I have those. Then down here in the bottom I have miscellaneous things that I can't fit anywhere else here. Ragtime and Early Blues Library. Library of Piano Classics. I have a bunch of Einaudi books. Ludovico Einaudi, the um, contemporary composer. His music is nice, but it's a little repetitive. 50 Easy Classical Themes. I have some... Then I have a bunch of... Uh, three ring binders. Now, if you ever have music that's, uh, if you have printouts, for instance, if you print something out like from musicnotes.com or boxcaller.com, anything digital, I suggest to keep it well organized to keep it in uh, spiral bindings with these plastic covers here. And so I have a bunch of miscellaneous things in here that I think this is a book mostly of like wedding music and stuff that I've played in weddings here. I have The Well-Rounded Pianist, my own um, 
three ring binder to help me organize the well-rounded pianist. I have some more miscellaneous um, miscellaneous printouts and sheet music here for uh, that are that are in three ring binders. I have an old antique book here, a piano method, um, an old piano method here, and an antique book. Um, some miscellaneous things in here, I think, and some calendar books in here. So, pretty much, this is my current library. And, and as I said in the beginning of this video, I have much more. Actually, this is probably only 60% of all the books I have. I had a bunch of books that were lost. I have a bunch of books that are in storage. And also my wife has a, about a similar amount of books here in another, in a similar um, shelf in our living room. So I just want, I thought, you know, I thought it would be nice just to show you my library. Remember, there's two ways to organize things. You can organize alphabetically, or you can organize chronologically. But I think it's good to organize in one of those two ways, if you can, to keep everything organized and nice and neat. And then it's nice to have a row for any uh, reference books or that kind of thing. So I hope you got something out of this video and until we meet again. Bye.